Hello, we're looking at uh, adaptations for nutrition still. Uh, and today we're going to be looking at adaptations, particularly around teeth and jaws, um, before we then start to look at the alimentary canal, which will be following lessons. This session we're going to have a look, I say, at um, essentially different types of dentition and musculature of jaws or carnivores and herbivores. So this is a, an example of a carnivore skull. Okay. And you can have a look at different types of, of teeth. Okay, so we've got canines, we've got incisors. Our carnivores have got premolars and uh, the carnassial teeth. The carnassial teeth are like scissors, and they're slicing teeth. Uh, and there are molars. And the molars, again, are, are more pointy and sharp, mainly for, for cutting and slicing. So what I'd like you to do is, in your booklets, you can colour in the different types of teeth so you can identify the incisors and the canines, but also you need to have a look at adding some notes about the roles of different teeth. So a little bit of research that you can do to have a look at what canines are used for in carnivores, incisors, carnassials, and the molars. There are a few areas on the skull that are unlabeled. Okay. Let's have a think about what might go on there. What are they used for? I'd like you to do something similar with the herbivore skull. Okay. So you've got a herbivore skull here, probably a sheep or a goat. Okay, and we look at some differences. What are the differences with it? So we've got different types of teeth here. Okay, so do we have canines? What is this big gap called? Well, this gap is called the diastema. Okay, so what is that used for? Find out, make some notes. Okay, we've also got our molars here. Okay, so what's the differences between these molars in our herbivore and those in our carnivore? So have a look at those, have a look again, add in some colour to your diagrams and label the different parts. And a little annotation around each part of the, the teeth and what their, their main function is would be very useful and very useful for revision. Okay, so this is a, another example for you just of a herbivore skull, just for reference, slightly different position. So again, you can see this little gap, this diastella, we've got this horny pad at the top. So all of our herbivores have, have this as well. In an ideal world, you can have the opportunity to play and manipulate some different skulls, have a look at some actual physical skulls and the different teeth, the different shapes of, of um, skulls for uh, you know, their different type modes of nutrition, what they do. So examples here, we've got a few. So we've got things like deer and beaver. We've got so coyote, porpoises or so cetaceans, marmosets, so little small primates uh, and anteaters and that. So you can have a look at these and just see the, the huge variation that we have within um, the, the skull shape and skull type, all around the, the type of food that they eat and the adaptations to enable them to, to use that and catch that, that food item or that prey item or eat that grass or whatever it may be. So for example, you can see the cetacea, the porpoise has got this long beak-like structure with lots and lots of small pointed teeth, ideally for gripping hold of fish so that the fish can't escape. So just a little bit more information to hopefully you've had a look, you've coloured in some of the key differences and had a bit of a research. So what you've got here is the incisors. Okay, The incisors are the cutting teeth. They're the front teeth in the jaw, usually for biting and grasping food. Okay? Uh, incisors in rodents, okay, they tend to have a couple of pairs, and they grow throughout their lives. They need to continually eat and gnaw uh, to grind those teeth down. Otherwise, they end up with all sorts of problems and the teeth will continually grow. And actually, you, you might find that uh, sometimes some pet owners that haven't give, given their, their pets, rats in particular, um, something to gnaw on and to chew, their teeth can grow and they actually have to be trimmed, you know, snip the teeth. Okay? Um, this isn't something that you, know, you particularly want to do, but it allows them to continue to eat again. As you can see here in the diagram, you've got different types of incisors. We've got canines in this, this particular example here on the right. We've got carnassials. Um, so this is going to be a carnivore over here. And over this side, we've got another um, herbivore. But again, they've both got incisors. So that's just for the key. Let me move over to our um, canines, so our canine teeth. Okay? These are um, sharp, they've got a uh, pointy edge, and they're used usually with the incisors to um, sort of bite into food or to grab and make that kill bite. Okay? Uh, the tusks of many animals actually are, are, such as elephants, are modified canines. So the canines are used, so a large cat is a prime example, try and get up, grab hold of the neck, pierce, 
and um, essentially asphyxiate the prey. They want to try and kill the prey as quickly as they can to reduce injury to themselves. <clears throat> okay. So again, in our herbivores, though, the inc there are no incisors. There's this gap, this diastema. Uh, and this essentially is a, a larger place for a larger tongue and to have more food. Um, so you can grind and, and chew uh, grassy material, cellulose, for a lot longer. The cellulose is a lot harder to break down. Okay. So these are our canine teeth in our, our carnivores and some omnivores as well. So earlier on, I asked you to have a look at um, on those diagrams what what would be attached to the, the sort of the gaps, those spaces on those skulls. One of the first slides. And essentially, what you're looking at are the muscles. So the jaw muscles are well developed uh, and powerful to enable a carnivore to grip the prey. So our, our carnivore has got these well developed um, crushing uh, power and force uh, muscles. Okay. There's no sideways movement of the jaw. Okay. The biting is bite force up and down generally. There's no sideways movement of the jaw. That's found in herbivores and having to grind that food up. Okay. Um, yeah, so if there was sideways movement in, in the uh, carnivore jaw, it would essentially dislocate. They don't really want that. Okay. Uh, so the vertical jaw movement is much greater um, than in herbivores, allowing open wide bite. And you think of a crocodile, it's all in the bite force down. Okay. Uh, there's not as much strength in lifting the crocodile's jaw up, which is why they can, you can hold a, a crocodile's mouth shut uh, with a little bit of tape, for example. It can't break it. The force is in the bite force, that killing bite. Okay. And so as a result, you've got different muscles. Okay. So we've got the masseter and the temporalis. So the larger masseter, okay, large temporalis, a big temporalis muscle to snap shut. And you've got the masseter as sort of your, your slicing and grinding one. Okay. So the masseter, maximum force uh, for crushing and grinding, okay, um, and essentially that, that masseter allows that sideways movement, that grinding of teeth along your molars. So if you imagine your, your molars, okay, the grinding stuff between them, okay, they're a large surface area, they're flattened, and therefore they can grind that cellulose material uh, within. You can guess the skull. Um, what I do is, is pause the video as you go through and um, see if you can work out what the skull is and see if you've got it right. So our first skull. Look at the shape, look at um, position, look at where you might have muscles attached, uh, look at the different types of teeth. What might this one be? It is a bear. Okay, well done if you've got one. Okay, look again, look at this one. Look at the teeth in particular on this one. Okay. Give you an idea that it's probably a specific group, so our rodents. Uh, and this is actually a beaver, it's quite a large skull, difficult to, to judge the size by the picture. Okay, so long sloping jaw, uh, we've got quite a lot of flat molars there, not a huge diastema. Okay, the pig. Okay, looking at this jaw here, look at the skull again, we've got the sort of larger region for muscle attachments okay quite a large eye socket big canines okay and um, we've got our nice sharp carnassial teeth that's our domestic cat Helis domesticus okay what might this be okay quite a long large skull large canines again carnassial teeth uh, slicing and a little few molars at the back that's our dog. A few more. Deer, okay. Large diastema, this large gap. Okay, our little horny pad at the top for, for gripping. So you use the bottom teeth and the horny pad for plucking leaves and things, and plucking grass and snipping, pulling it off and bringing it in with the tongue uh, to use the space to move the, the grass around. No idea what that one might be. Looks pretty pretty fierce to me. Large carnivore, uh, large carnivore, large canine teeth, big carnassials. Fox. And again, something similar. We've sort of looked at this earlier on, or we'll look at the similar structure. So we've got our little incisors, our bony pad, lots of large flat molars, big gap, big diastema. The goat. Any idea what that one might be? Looks pretty, pretty fierce again. Big incisors. It's a hamster. 
You know, I've been bitten by a hamster, which I have, you know, it's, it's quite painful. You know, those massive incisors. And this one is a wolf skull. So again, large canines, uh, incisors, and these big carnassial slicing teeth for slicing meat. It's fairly obvious. Okay, again, long, different adaptations to the teeth. Okay, so we've got an alligator. I'll give you a crocodile. Okay, if you had that one. And then this one here, we've got these very sharp, backwards pointing teeth. Okay? Uh, it is a snake. It is not uh, a venomous snake. Okay? This is from a boa constrictor. Okay? So a boa constrictor is a non-venomous snake. It's a constrictor. Um, so it wraps itself around its prey item. Okay? So it bites, grabs, coils around its prey item, and then will slowly asphyxiate its prey, and then it can swallow it. And the back of pointed teeth are to stop the prey from getting back out again. Okay, so the teeth we cut to get back out. This slide just looks at um, some variation within teeth and teeth type. So again, essentially you've got your um, upper and lower jaws, okay, so different types of teeth where you've got your incisors, your canines, uh, premolars and some molars. You've got omnivores here, okay, so there's uh, omnivores to eat uh, meat and plant material. So again, we've got incisors, canines, premolars and molars. Humans, we've got our, our dentition, again, very varied. Uh, in comparison, and our herbivores, okay, some incisors, but if you look at the molars and premolars, they're very large, flattened, and again, that's to, to grind up um, that plant material as much as possible. Cellulose is incredibly difficult to, uh, to digest and to break down. So the more it can be ground up, the better. And as we all come on to soon, we will have a look at ruminants, ruminants, sorry, and these ruminants <clears throat> will use these flat grinding teeth, they'll swallow it, they will go through the stomach system, this four-chambered stomach. They will regurgitate food that isn't chewed properly, re-chew it again, and swallow it again. So we'll look at that in the, in the following lesson. Okay, so this uh, little post, this diagram, just really shows some examples of different types of teeth uh, with our herbivores and carnivores, omnivores. Frugivore is one that only eats fruit, and humans, where we sort of sit into the mix. But it's relatively interesting. So this slide really looks at uh, molars and shows that sort of lateral grinding process of molars within our herbivores. This sort of sliding across movement across the teeth, as you can see here, this backwards and forwards, and this large flat surface area, flattish surface area, so we can actually maximise that grinding effort. Okay, if it's sort of between your fingertips or you know, put those together, that sort of grinding position that you can have. Okay. And again, it will grind on one side, it will chew on one side, and then it will move over and chew on the other. So we get that lateral movement. The previous slide just showed a, a reminder of our canine. This really is looking at um, molars and premolars. Okay, so it gives you an idea of the role of, of those molars, what they do, what their purpose is. Okay, so look at our molars. And we also have, remember, we've got molars in our carnivores as well. Okay. Limited tend to be generally smaller, not as effective because it's the carnassials um, that have a main role within our carnivores. But our herbivores, our molars are the key teeth really, they're grinding. So you've got a diagram as well um, to label, so you can look at the sections through a teeth. So enamel is the hardest substance made by, by animals, and it's um, deposited on the outside of the crown of the tooth uh, by cells in the gum before the tooth reaches the surface. Okay? It's a non-living substance, and it um, contains lots of calcium salts, uh, and it forms this really hard, efficient biting surface. Okay? And the dentine itself is more like bone okay, in its structure. It's hard, but not, not as brittle uh, as enamel. Okay? And also contains sort of cytoplasm from the cells. Okay, so you can sort of build up the dentine uh, inside the tooth. It adds more dentine inside the tooth itself. Uh, in the centre of the tooth, you've got this pulpy um, sort of section. Okay, And 
these contain uh, sort of nerves, okay, uh, it's connective tissue, and so it's the living part of the tooth essentially. Okay, uh, so it's got our oh, nerve endings. That's why you, if you have a, a broken tooth, it hurts. Okay, you have a filling and it's gone down to the nerves, it hurts. Okay. Uh, so essentially brings blood supply and things through into the nerve to uh, allow the tooth to continue to grow. Um, they are particularly sensitive, so if you've got sensitive teeth to hot and cold, then the nerves are sensitive to hot and cold as well. Um, and then you have the root which attaches your uh, teeth into the gum itself. Okay, So this is a little socket region so that the, uh, it sort of holds it in place really. Okay, um, the, the issue is, is, is you know, thinking about this idea of nerves. Well, if you think about an elephant's um, tusk being a modified tooth, and sometimes you have, unfortunately, people go and hunt an elephant, uh, and they will often tranquilize the elephant, and they will just saw off the tusk. That would be the equivalent of somebody taking a, a saw um, to your teeth, a flat saw, and just going across your teeth. That's going to be incredibly painful. Okay? So not a pleasant pleasant thing to happen. Okay, so think about that. Label your teeth, label your diagrams of your teeth, uh, and add that to your, your folders. Okay, so over the next lessons, um, we're going to start having a look at the role of human digestion in particular. We're going to start looking at intestines and the whole digestive tract of humans. Um, so go through, make sure you've got all your notes on teeth, um, make sure you're happy with that, and um, I will see you next lesson.